It's no longer just Breath of the Wild 2, this is now the world of Tears of the Kingdom. On top of all the rich story and lore it's going to bring, is a vast amount of new gameplay mechanics present, even within the limited screen time of the newest trailer. Whether subtle or direct, these all speak huge volumes on how this game's going to play out, especially when compared to similar mechanics in Breath of the Wild. I think a more technical look at this gameplay with minor speculation is ideal. We've done this before with the last trailer, discussing things such as the flamethrower shield that Link uses, the sky ascending move that allows Link to phase through platforms, but most notably here, the stasis looking time reversal move, where Link stops a spiky boulder rolling towards him, only to send it back in time up the hill, crushing the foes who try to use it against him. Now, I mentioned this one specifically because it's the one main returning mechanic we see in this new trailer, but the context and scope is far different. At some point in time, some relic of a sky island must have fallen out of the sky, and using this new time reversal power on it, Link can revert it back to the sky world. Attaching himself to it, this can be used as an elevator to ascend upwards to the islands. Then Link can jump off to the island it takes him to, only for the rock elevator to land back down to be used again for potential future use. Now, in order for this to work mechanically, all reversible objects would have to have some sort of movement history recorded in them, which acts as a path backwards in time that it can travel. For most objects, such as this spiky boulder, it will have a dynamic writing history, meaning that all movement for this and other like objects will always be recorded in case the player decides to reverse time on them. According to the official Nintendo patent on this mechanic made public a few months back, the amount you can reverse something back by is tracked by some unknown metric, which is either time, possibly being able to reverse the last 10 or 20 seconds of an object's movement, or maybe there is no time cap, as rather an object can be pushed back to its origin state, when it was spawned in, and this meter references all the time between an object's current position and its original. In the past, it was unclear which of these two systems would be the prevalent one just by looking at the spiky boulder clip, as either could make sense with the provided context. But with this new method of ascending upwards, I doubt this mechanic could be limited to only allowing the player to reverse a set amount of time, because that then relies off a player witnessing a whole chunk of the Sky Island falling down to the ground and only having mere seconds to act on it, otherwise missing out on the ascension fully. So instead, it's likely that the movement being tracked for objects is just everything from its most recent to its original position, so situations like this can be possible and are not on an inhuman time crunch. But this all begs a question, will there just be chunks of the Sky Islands falling out of the sky at random in order to make these events happen? Well, no, I don't think that's likely, but I do believe that occasional chunks will fall out of certain islands as scripted events. Maybe you enter an area and you can visibly see and hear a piece of the sky falling to a certain point. Then when the player goes there to that point, they actively remember the piece of the sky that fell so they know to send it in reverse when they get there and write it up. It may be fully hard to conceptualize without a visual example, but the most similar thing I can compare this to would be the red shooting stars that give you the Xenoblade DLC armor in Breath of the Wild. The player enters an area trigger and the object will fall from the sky along with making a noise, so the player can hear, see, and retrieve it. If it's not retrieved, then this event can be experienced again. The Sky Island Ruin pieces that fall wouldn't act too differently from this, with the exception of having the trigger for this event probably being a radius around it rather than a set spot like the Xenoblade armor. Now, this fleshes out the mechanic in multiple ways. One, the player can actually tell this is a reversible object if they see it falling out of the sky first. If it was instead just a ruin with pre-written, reverse pathing, the player likely wouldn't make the connection between the random object and being able to send it up, unless they watch the trailer. Secondly, since this would be a scripted event, the way it falls from the sky and lands can be precise and exact, so when it's reversed, it's a clean moving rock that easily acts like an elevator, rather than a tossing and turning boulder that will flip you off. And third, if all this is correct, this helps solve one huge part of the mystery on how traversing the world with sky islands will work. So you may have noticed that a lot of the colonies in the sky are clustered together in groups. Compact in a sense where they are a flight away, but in some cases are insanely far away from other islands or groups of them. I think it's likely that at some point in the later game, there will be some sort of grand mechanic that will allow you to travel anywhere between the sky islands at will, from other islands in the sky, maybe utilizing that giant bird as a flight plane of sorts to do so. But this feels like a late game thing after you've already cleared a lot of the game's main dungeons and got a lot of the needed items to do so. 
So until then, it's likely the player's goal from the surface to find their own solutions on how to get up to each separate cluster in the sky world, making the relationship between ground and sky act as one big puzzle. The surface would act as one big hub world in this way, having to find all the solutions all around that allow Link to get to each of the islands or clusters from the ground. And in the case of some cluster of islands above Farron, when a player gets close to the general area, that's when the scripted event of an island ruin will fall from the sky, and a player can then connect the dots and go over there in order to get up to them. Maybe some of the other island clusters have a similar solution too, something falling from an island you have to reverse to get up. But I feel that every island or cluster has some sort of obtainable way to access them from the surface via puzzle. And this new shot from the trailer gave us a big glimpse at just one of the puzzles needed to get to one. This would be a great way to help section out the broad, investigative traversal of the surface hub world through semi-familiar lands, with more carefully traversed, varied, and sectioned sky segments that can provide bigger, more intense challenges. And I'm sure each of these will have their own special movement mechanics to get through them. The Sky Islands mostly focusing on platform phasing like we saw in that one clip, but also maybe still climbing as well, which may be restricted to grippy surfaces like this tree root, assuming the edges of the island are unclimbable. But either way, when a player figures out how to get to another cluster of islands from the surface, it's likely going to be a worthy test before you find all the challenges in the sky to come. You know, like dungeons, tough enemies, and even dragons. No, literally, there's a giant dragon right there. At least the thinner tail of one. And that's pretty much all I have to say on this topic. I would love to hear your thoughts on this and how you think surface-to-air travel will work in Tears of the Kingdom. This was just my theory based off a thorough, mechanical breakdown I did, since we now have multiple instances of the yellow time reversal power being used. I am super hyped to see how this will actually play out though when it comes out in 8 months. We'll definitely be making more thorough, statistical breakdowns after that point as well. But until then, thank you for watching! Feel free to like and subscribe for more Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild content to follow, and I'll see you all soon! Goodbye!